morning everyone today my session is on carey's risk assessment methods i hope by the end of this session you all will be familiar with what is known as carey's risk what are all the methods that assess carey's risk and what are all the assessments that are available for the salivary bacterial counts and the predisposing factors moving on to the introduction early childhood carey's is an obscure frequently ignored and pressing health disease affecting the quality of life of children below 3 years of age it was entrenched that early childhood caries is a strong predictor of dental caries in permanent dentition among the identified caries causing risk factors in the literature microorganisms such as mutant streptococci that is streptococcus mutans and streptococcus sorbinus and lactobacilli that is lactobacillus acidophilus create an acidic environment and are implicated to be the prime caries causing species for initiation and progression of the decay respectively what is caries risk the probability that an individual will develop a certain number of caries lesion either cavitated or non cavitated and reach a given level of disease progression over a specific period of time provided his or her exposure status remains the same during this period so this is known as caries risk moving on to what is caries risk assessment method any method that uses any individual risk or protective factor to predict caries development or progression is known as caries risk assessment method and to improve caries prediction various combination of caries risk assessment methods have been developed into so called caries risk assessment tools or systems why caries risk is important caries risk assessment plays a major role in identifying and understanding the child's early childhood caries risk factors and thereby reduces the chance of further advance of the disease so this is the important component in the clinical decision making process it also foster the treatment of the disease process instead of treating the outcome of the disease it gives an understanding of the disease factors for a specific patient it individualizes selects and determines the frequency of preventive and restorative treatment for a patient and also it anticipates caries progression or stabilization there are multiple caries risk assessment forms available to direct the practitioners and provide a personalized preventive protocol for an individual by assessing their baseline caries risk the caries risk assessment methods that are available are caries management by risk assessment that is camra method system of the american dental association that is ada method dandy caries risk assessment model apd's caries risk assessment form my smile buddy caries risk pyramid kyogram National University of Singapore Caries Risk Assessment Tool that is no scratch risk assessment models by University of North Carolina University of Michigan Pediatric Dental Clinic Caries Risk Assessment Sheet Caries Questionnaire in combination with clinical observations Caries Assessment and Risk Evaluation Test that is CAT test traffic light matrix caries risk assessment for treatment that is craft tool previsor and depa caries risk assessment tools so what are the predisposing factors that we check for assessing caries risk of a child the predisposing factors that are uniform in all the caries risk assessment methods were clinical findings biological factors and the protective factors under each factors there are few questions that we need to mark as high or low 
based on the child's risk. The bacterial assessment or the saliva test that alone is not considered for assessing the caries risk in few caries risk assessment methods. Example, ADA method, the smile buddy method, pre-visor and depa tools, etc. For example, while comparing the camera assessment tool and the ADA assessment tool, we have all the three factors that are uniform in both the forms, that is the biological factors, the protective factors and the clinical findings. Only the salivary test or the bacterial count test is missing in ADA assessment form. So under this biological factors, we have questions like mother or the primary caregiver has active caries, the child has greater than 3 between meal sugar containing snacks or beverages per day, the child is put to bed with a bottle containing natural or added sugars. Under protective factors, we have questions like child receives optimally fluoridated drinking water, child has teeth brushed daily with fluoridated toothpaste, child receives topical fluoride from healthcare professional and under clinical findings, we have questions like child has greater than one decade missing or filled surfaces, child has active white spot lesions or enamel defects and child has plaque on teeth. So under the bacterial count, we have to check for the mutant streptococci levels or the counts and the lactobacillus counts. That alone is missing in ADA assessment tool. So under these questions, for example, if you ask mother or primary caregiver as active caries or a DK in the past 12 months in the camera assessment form, if you find there is an active caries in the mother or the primary care, caregiver, then you need to mark as yes for the camera assessment tool. For example, the first question in the ADA assessment tool is fluoride exposure. So if they are exposed to the fluoride through drinking water or through supplements or through professional application, then you need to score as yes. So that will come under low risk in the ADA form and likewise you need to fill up all the questions. So the last predisposing factor in the caries risk assessment sheet is the salivary bacterial counts. If bacterial counts should be assessed for the particular caries risk assessment method you have chosen, then you shall consider to assess the salivary bacterial counts through culture-based method, dit slide method or molecular methods. For example, for the culture-based methods, you have mighty salivarius bacitracin agar for lactobacillus you have rogasa medium under dip slide method we have dentocult streptococcus mutants and lactobacillus caries screen sm that is from finland oricult yen crt bacteria from ivoclar and molecular methods like checkup board dna hybridization genomic fingerprinting real-time quantitative polymerase chain reaction techniques, etc. So once this bacterial counts or assessed through these methods, that is through culture-based or dip slide method or molecular methods, then you can score the bacterial counts in this scoring sheet and you need to lastly score whether the overall caries risk is high or low based on how many scores you have in the high risk and the low risk. For example, if you have more scores in the high risk under biological, protective, clinical findings and salivary counts, then you need to mark as high. If there are more uh, yes under low risk, then you need to score the overall caries risk assessment as low. So while collecting the saliva for the bacterial counts, you need to collect at least 0.5 to 1 ml of the child's or the patient's saliva and through one of these methods, you can assess the bacterial count. 
So now we know the available Keres risk assessment tools, but which Keres risk assessment method is appropriate and reliable? A systematic review by Christian et al. in the year 2019 stated that NUSCRATCH, that is National University of Singapore Keres risk assessment tool, reported the most information to inform the assessment of its measurement properties, where this tool attains a higher quality rating than the other compared Keres risk assessment tools. Also, another study, a systematic review by Featherstone in the year 2021, reported that kariogram and camera methods have been examined in several clinical studies and demonstrated good Keres risk assessment capabilities. The AAPD 0 to 5 years form gives somewhat of a match to the camera results and uses most of the protective and risk categories. So still, it is not yet clear to state the strength of evidence to select a particular Keres risk assessment tool. To summarize, the change in our understanding of dental caries and its prevention and treatment makes us mandatory for all dentists treating infants, children, adolescents, and adults to incorporate caries risk assessment into their clinical practice. Also, proper documentation may help enhance the patient's compliance with the protocol for preventive care plans. It is also important to use a caries risk assessment form or electronic tool not only as a checklist to determine caries risk but also to use the details to create a caries management plan. Thank you all for your patience listening. Have a nice day.